Robert F. Bruner, The Panic of 1907, Lessons Learned from the Market's Perfect Storm. Dive into the riveting world of The Panic of 1907, Lessons Learned from the Market's Perfect Storm, where author Robert F. Bruner unveils the intricacies of a historical financial crisis that rattled the U.S. and global economy. Discover the aftershocks of the 1906 San Francisco earthquake that spiraled into a tumultuous economic turmoil, unravel the reasons behind the financial crisis, and witness the heroic efforts of financier J.P. Morgan in mitigating the disaster. This summary highlights the seven primary factors that instigated the crisis, offering crucial lessons and insights for the modern reader while reminding us that history often has a way of repeating itself. Financial Impacts of the 1906 San Francisco Earthquake The 1906 San Francisco earthquake not only destroyed the city's financial district but also had global fiscal consequences. New York stock prices dropped by $1 billion, and insurance companies were unable to cover their new liabilities. Companies converted assets to gold and shipped it from Britain to the US, causing the Bank of England and other European banks to increase interest rates. This tightening of credit had enormous implications on Wall Street, causing a fall in equity prices and a strain on the world's capital supply and credit facilities. In the aftermath, President Theodore Roosevelt stoked public fears of financiers and their allies. However, the crisis was limited in its devastation due to J.P. Morgan's leadership of the collective effort. The Bank of England prohibited loans to secure funding for the flow of gold into the U.S., contracting U.S. gold reserves and reducing liquidity. The dire effects of this included harm to the market for natural resources, especially copper, which suffered a sharp decline in price. The Panic of 1907 In 1907, two bankers, Charles W. Morse and F. Augustus Hines, tried to monopolize United Copper Company shares, causing a mad scramble for them that ultimately led to multiple bank failures and a countrywide panic. The United States had no central bank and relied on clearing houses for protection against financial risk. The New York Clearinghouse expelled Morse and Hines from banking, hoping to stop the panic but bank runs and failures continued to spread. J.P. Morgan organized funding to save Trust Company of America, but the panic continued to grow. Eventually, Morgan convinced Trust Company presidents to pool their funds and save not only Trust Company of America but many other institutions on the brink of failure. This event led to increased regulation and investor confidence impairment. Morgan's Heroics Amidst the chaos of financial crises in early 20th century America, J.P. Morgan steps in to save the day. As banks fail and credit becomes scarce, Morgan mobilizes his resources to prevent a complete collapse of the financial system. He mobilizes funds to save the New York Stock Exchange, creates money pools to bail out distressed banks and trusts, and even secures new credit for the municipal government. Though his actions were criticized and fueled political change, Morgan's heroics earned him respect both at home and abroad. Morgan's Regal Power Amidst the financial crisis, J.P. Morgan used his influence to resolve issues among trust companies while securing a guarantee for U.S. Steel to acquire TCNI, ultimately leading to the creation of the U.S. Federal Reserve System. As New York's financial crisis deepened, J.P. Morgan found himself dealing with yet another emergency involving the Trust Company of America and Lincoln Trust. Despite previous involvement in similar issues, this time Morgan chose to let the trust companies work things out among themselves. To ensure they did, he summoned their executives to his mansion and locked them in a library until they reached a deal. Morgan's ability to secure their agreement demonstrated the extent of his power and influence. Although Moore and Schley and TCNI remained problematic, Morgan's continued involvement eventually led to a deal with U.S. Steel to acquire TCNI, with the condition that the government would not bring monopoly charges against it. President Roosevelt agreed, and Wall Street erupted in jubilation. Meanwhile, the rest of the country continued to suffer from bank runs and bankruptcies. To provide much-needed liquidity, Cordelieu moved cash to regional banks, and in 1908, 
Congress approved the Aldrich Freeland Act providing emergency currency to banks. In 1910, U.S. government leaders planned a National Reserve Bank, which eventually became the U.S. Federal Reserve System created in 1913 to regulate banks and furnish an elastic currency. J.P. Morgan's role in resolving the financial crisis highlighted his power in the business world while also playing a part in shaping the government's response to future economic challenges. The 1907 Financial Crisis The 1907 financial crisis was caused by a combination of seven primary factors, including interconnectivity of financial organizations, inadequate safety buffers, and adverse leadership. The San Francisco earthquake and Bank of England's finance bill restrictions also contributed to the crisis. Behavioral aberrations fueled by fear and greed worsened the situation. The crisis was somewhat mitigated by J.P. Morgan's leadership, which prevented it from becoming much worse. The seven factors that contributed to the crisis have parallels in modern times, making it crucial to increase transparency, safety buffers, and collective action in times of financial trouble. As the gripping tale of the 1907 financial crisis unfolds, we learn crucial lessons from the events that shook the US and global economy. With the alarming interconnectivity of modern financial institutions and the ever-present risk of economic meltdowns, it is essential to heed the warnings and lessons detailed in Bruner's The Panic of 1907. By understanding the factors that led to the crisis and the decisive actions of leaders like J.P. Morgan, we can better prepare ourselves for possible future financial turmoil. And, as the author suggests, increased transparency, safety buffers, and strong collective actions can help minimize the potential impact of these perfect storms on our economies and lives.